But I tell you this much, it wasn't no sunny day. It was dreary and the rain start coming. And I mean the rain start coming. And emergency responders working around the clock. South Texas. Breaking news, Hurricane Harvey barreling into the Texas coastline. 20 inches of rain in 24 hours in Beaumont, Texas would be devastating. Uh, so uh, talk about the scope of devastation in Houston as as you know it. What, what, what have you heard from FEMA? What have you heard from other government agencies? Tens of thousands of houses. All this is going to have to be repaired before we get into November. When a disaster hits its utter chaos in a community, you may be without power for a period of time. Your documents may have been flooded or they may have been burned in a wildfire. So it's very difficult for people to ascertain immediately what their needs are. Most people are in shock. They're trying to find shelter for themselves, their families and their pets. So that's usually the immediate need. When the hurricane came, uh, the wind and all that and the rain, it, it got worse. But then after that, then it, uh, when it kind of, when the hurricane just slowed down, the rain came back and my house just, it just, the water just came floating in and the rain just came in. I had from my house top that was really bad and my son tried to put stuff over that to keep the leaks in and it was raining from the uh, backside of my bathroom and all the water run and when we took the boards off, it just rotted, everything was rotted. In the kitchen, it leaked. In the bathroom, it just went bad until one day I met a lady that told me at the store that I probably could get a house. And I moved out and everything like they told me and they was gonna come in. And, but I still had to wait. Had to go to a hotel and live there. Supposed to be in three months. I'm in up six months. So in, in our area that we're in the Diocese of Victoria. We haven't seen a disaster of the magnitude of Harvey since Carla. So there has been probably three to four generations that have never seen a disaster at all or experienced a disaster unless you were somewhere else in a disaster. And so preparedness was something that was lacking in our area. You know, what if, you know, uh, what do we have what is needed to be able to assist right away. And so we didn't have that. It took a lot of time, in some cases even years, for people to repair their homes, for to replace their furniture. So just the timing and not having the resources available right away, I think that was one of the main issues that I faced, like trying to help people. Because in some cases I was just there listening to the story and I didn't have any anything to give them. It was just give us time because we don't have it right now. We just have to wait and keep waiting. And for them, it's a little bit stressful because they've been facing uh, all this trauma going through the hurricane and now having to wait and just looking at their house every day and the situation they're going, it, it's, a hard, it, it's a hard face for them. Hurricane Harvey happened in August of 2017. We are now in November of 2022. I still have two cases open waiting for their rebuilds to finish. Programs need to come in faster so that people won't have to wait over five years down the road. Blockchain technology will be transformative in the disaster relief and recovery space. It will help with transparency. It will help with accountability. It will prevent duplication of services. Trying to navigate the bureaucracy of different programs, what they need to do for recovery, the amount of information they've been able to store, whether they stored any of that. They may be still keeping items on what I call old school paper trail and they lose everything, and then having to try to go and recreate all those documents uh, through the local courthouse or through their medical system is very challenging for families. We have got an offering called Survivor Wallet, and with that, it means that the organizations who respond to a disaster 
can say that there are supports available at a particular location. And it means that when you've been validated as an individual, you can go and make a claim to a retailer like a Walmart using the survivor wallet. And in return then for validating who you are and proving that there is value within your wallet, you can get those goods to replenish your home. And it means then that the person who is funding that, they've got much more granular information about where the money is going. The PII information is also what's concerning is that, you know, you have files and you have these driver's license and numbers and you have this, you know, that even the last four digits of your social, your house number, you know, your telephone number. And, you know, that's something that we need to protect the PII information. And when you do it all on your phone and it's sent all together, and it's not just laying there on someone's desk or in some filing cabinet, you know, that's, that's even better. We can immediately qualify them and we can send dollars to their digital wallet or we can send a code that they can then use at a local furniture store where they can also use to access services on online uh, furniture services. We're looking at a number of models right now to see what will be the most cost effective and the most efficient for families. But just imagine, we're gonna shorten that time from six, seven months to probably 30 days for an individual. So that is amazing for someone who's got a family sleeping on the floor, maybe on backpacks, maybe on just sheets and blankets, and we're able to help them, uh, give them hope and need, and a starter kit for their new home. But still, it was a blessing what I got. You know, I, I'm not complaining. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy.